Hey, Joe, can we ring the bell for four? All right. <laughs> okay, good evening, everyone. We are continuing our discussion about putting edification into practice and want to continue our practical discussion. And we're going to start in 1 Thessalonians 5. That's where we're going to uh, begin our class this evening. Um, and before we read from 1 Thessalonians 5, we'll go ahead and start with a prayer. Father in heaven, we praise your name. We thank you so much for Jesus who gives life purpose and meaning, whose resurrection gives us hope, gives us the power to overcome sin and the power to defeat death as well. Uh, we rejoice in Jesus' resurrection and we pray, God, that uh, we'll live our lives um, in accordance with the resurrection, as we have joined ourselves to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection in the waters of baptism. Bless our study this evening as we continue to talk about how to build each other up and to encourage one another in the faith to keep pressing on um, despite whatever difficulties we may face in this life. Um, we pray that you'll bless our study and you'll help us to learn things and think about things in a new way that we've not considered before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in 1 Thessalonians 5, just setting up the context a little bit, remember Paul had established the church in Thessalonica, but he could not stay long because the Jews in the city kind of, you know, started a riot and got everybody all riled up and Paul had to leave town. <clears throat> well, after Paul leaves, he journeys on down south toward Corinth, but he's very concerned about those Thessalonian Christians because, number one, they're new Christians which is already concerning. You want to make sure, you know, they're being edified and strengthened and all that. But number two, they're surrounded by a culture that's hostile toward Christianity. And so Paul's really concerned that maybe they'll be pressured to leave the faith. Maybe they'll be making moral compromises. And so he sends Timothy to check on them. And Timothy comes back and tells Paul, actually, the Thessalonians are doing great. And so this letter is a very positive letter because of this amazing report that Paul has about their faith. And so he says in 1 Thessalonians 5, look at uh, 9 through 11, he says, God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us so that whether we are uh, awake or asleep, we will live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another just as you also are doing. So the reason I wanted to start here is that phrase, just as you also are doing. Because I think that describes us at PSD. I think in general, we're a pretty edifying group. People are encouraging one another. But uh, like the Thessalonians, Paul wants us to keep doing that and to actually get better at it. In fact, there's a phrase just in this letter. It's the only letter where the phrase is used in the, in the entire New Testament um, Chris Emerson designed his podcast uh, after this phrase, but the phrase is excel still more. So look in chapter 4, chapter 4, in verse 1, he says, Finally then, brethren, we request and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us instruction as to how you ought to walk and please God, just as you actually do walk, that you excel still more. So again, they're already walking in a way that pleases God. Paul just wants them to do it better, to excel still more. One more example of this, look in the same chapter, chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. He says, verse 9, Now as to the love of the brethren, you have no need for anyone to write to you. For you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. For indeed, you do practice it toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, to excel still more. So again, they're already walking in a way that pleases God. They're already loving one another, and they're already encouraging one another and building each other up. But I think Paul would say uh, to us the same thing that he said to them about that. Okay, that's great. That's wonderful. Now keep doing it and excel still more at it. So one very practical and tangible way that we can excel at this is to do what we're going to do this evening, and that is to find a way to write out a brief edification bio that we can actually put in the directory under our names. We talked about Dwayne's last time, um, his picture. Uh, good job, Rachel. Uh, Rachel got his picture updated there. 
Uh, and we talked about his, that we learned that he really enjoys having group discussions about religious books. That's what really builds him up. And he likes to barbecue, right? So what I want us to do is walk through six questions, most of which were questions that Dwayne designed a long time ago for a congregation he used to work for as an edification survey. And as we walk through these six questions, it will form a, a template for our own edification bios. And just to, you know, give you something to look forward to, I'm going to share mine with you this evening. So I think you're really going to like it. Uh, so uh, let's kind of walk through these questions together. I understand maybe it's uncomfortable. You don't want to share any of this stuff. Um, we're in this together. What is something interesting about you that most people don't know? So generally in these bios, it'd be good to just have you know, a brief thing about where you're born and raised or whatever. Uh, but then you can kind of transition to this question, answering this, what's interesting about you that, that most people don't know? For example, you're adopted, you've, you've been skydiving, you like to play the harmonica, or you've played the harmonica while skydiving. You guys already read that on the email. So, <laughs> uh, what, do you, what do you guys have? Any hands, any takers, nobody's, nobody's going yet. <laughs> All right, Cindy, brave. She's, she, okay, yeah, well, fill out a visitor's card. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, wait, Joe's got the mic for you. Oh, I um, am a big crocheter. All right, and you are not alone in that. There are other ladies that, that crochet here at PSD, so that's great. That's a great connection point in a way that you can edify uh, other ladies to do that as well. Yeah, Charlie? Um, I am Charlotte, and I, I don't crochet, but... Um. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> um, I lived in Alaska for a year, okay. and I have went to church in 40 below weather. Wow, yeah, so next time we complain about the weather, right? You can't make it to church, just talk to you. All right, okay, yeah, really good. I like that. Um, anybody else have anything interesting? All right, Will Rimmer's got one. <clears throat> I know a little bit of French. It's not really um, okay. It's not really fluency. It's more like proficiency. All right. So proficient in French, well enough to get by if you went to France. Very good. All right. Brandon's got one. I understand. It's weird and awkward to talk about. That's fine. We we get it. And then Retha after Brandon. Actually, Aretha can go ahead since the mic is still coming. <laughs> I have my concealed, concealed weapons license. I love to go to the shoot range. And okay. I'm a pretty good shot. All right. So don't mess with Aretha. That's what she said. So <laughs> that's what we got out of that. Just be careful what you say to, to Aretha. So <laughs> Brandon? I got my black belt in MMA when I was 11. All right. That's, that's awesome. I did not know that, Brandon. That's, I, you're going to have to show me some stuff because I really like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and want to get better at it. So maybe you can show me some cool stuff. All right. All right. Any, any other takers? <laughs> I see laughter like, oh, I don't know if I want to share this. <clears throat> OK. Oh, all right. There we go. We got Jenna. <clears throat> I was in the Scripps National Spelling Bee when I was 14, although I did not make it on TV. I got close, though. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So good speller. Been in the Spelling Bee. Excellent. All right, Chloe. Um, I'm Chloe, and my goal is to open my own assisted living. All right. So she wants to open her own assisted living facility. Yeah, really good. That, that, to me, that's just so helpful, right? Just to know that about each other. Just, hey, I didn't know that before, and just gives a great foundation for conversation and connection. Um, really appreciate that. And again, hopefully you guys will all have the ability to share whatever you want to in your bio. Um, what happened? Oh, oh OK. <laughs> Jenna would have to correct the spelling on that. Very good. OK. <clears throat> yeah, so a bowler. Very good. Which I still, yeah, I still want to see that. I keep telling her we got we to get together and Ryan and Karen to go bowling, so I want to see that. Uh, all right, well, next question. What can someone say or do that builds you up the most, that edifies you the most? There may be, you know, several things, but 
Maybe there's something that really stands out to you. Maybe it's when someone serves you or, you know, studies or discusses the Bible with you, shares a meal with you. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different options. Chloe? Um, just saying, like, you've done a good job and recognizing that a job was done. Okay, yeah. So recognizing a, a job well done, that really helps Chloe. Not, I think probably we could all say that that helps us as well. But there may be one that stands out to us more than it stands out to others. So what about for you? Any other takers? <laughs> Not sure what that means. Subtitles. Okay. All right, Will. Whenever I'm told that my advice or just trying to help someone out has been put to use and has helped them. Okay, yeah, great. It's nice to hear if you give somebody advice that uh, it actually works and it actually helped them. Will, other Will? <laughs> uh, so this wouldn't be directed at me, uh, but when I see boldness, when I see people stand up for things that are right, even if, especially when they're in a crowd where they're, they have the minority opinion. Okay, yeah, so sometimes just seeing the courage of other people is really edifying and, and uplifting. Yeah, that's really good. What else? Anybody else want to share on this one? <clears throat> I can handle the awkward silence longer than you can. <laughs> All right, Rachel, good. <laughs> Saying that someone liked my comment in class. Okay, yeah, someone liked your comment in class. That's really good. So someone talk to Rachel, tell her that you liked her comment about someone liking your comments in class, and that will really edify her. <laughs> uh -uh. All right, anybody, any other takers on this one? Uh, okay, young people participating um, in worship looks like. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's really awesome because you're like, yeah, okay, the next generation, right? They're getting it, you know, they're, they're on the right track. That's, that's definitely encouraging and edifying to see. Okay. All right, being, yeah, being asked uh, to help with something, absolutely. It kind of shows trust that, that person trusts you enough to, to ask for your help on, on something. They see you as reliable and helpful. It's really good. All right, Debbie? I was going to say somebody telling you you're a good friend. Okay. Absolutely. Appreciating your, your friendship. That's, that's always edifying. Will? So this is one thing uh, that we want to, Sarah, I want to pass on as we get older, but um, understanding people's situations. And and re and relating to them, being uh, encouraging in that way, that you know, uh, if they're going through something, to not be judgmental, but but understand that they have a specific situation that you have, they may have gone through. Uh, it's, that's very up uplifting. Okay. Yeah. So when people understand what you're going through and can relate to you, Terry, and then Jenna. Going along with young people participating when I'm uh, <clears throat> teaching a class. And I see that the students are well prepared and really know their stuff. Mm. Very edifying to me. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As a teacher, that's like, that's gold, you know? <laughs> Great. Uh, Jenna had one. Um, reminding me of successes I've had uh, in the past or things I've done well, when, especially when I'm focused on like a, a recent mistake or uh, mm. sh shortcoming, <laughs> uh, just reminding me that that's not, that doesn't define, you know, all of me. Reminding, mm me of things that I've done well in the past, mm -hmm. successes, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, we can get laser focused on our failures. <laughs> Sometimes we need somebody to point out like, hey, that's just a small picture. Megan's got one up front here. Uh, uh, Megan Burns, sorry. So this isn't specific to me, but I was just thinking of the book that married people read, The Five Love Languages. Oh, yeah. And that, you know, that could be something simple that everybody could put on their profile. Like they could look at them, words of affirmation, gifts, acts of mm -hmm. service. I can't remember all of them off the mm -hmm. top of my head, but sure. like that would just be one little blurb that might make it easy to know, okay, this person really feels loved mm -hmm. when they get this because okay. it doesn't just apply to marriage. 
Yeah, no, I mean, that's a good concept uh, for sure. If you're familiar with Gary, I think it's Gary Smalley. Uh, he wrote Five Love Languages. Yeah, um, everybody kind of is uh, edified by in, and feels love in a different way. And our temptation is to think, well, I'm going to love them the way I receive love, when in reality, that's not really, they don't feel it the same way. They don't experience it the same way. Randy? Yeah, and you know, I guess it applies to everybody, but like if, if giving advice to someone, if they listen, rather than just, you know, excusing it away, they might decide later to, to accept it. They might decide later, you know, it's good, but I still rather do it my way mm -hmm. or whatever. But, but they listen to you when you give the advice. Okay. It's just, it's, like Debbie says, it's a way to validate. Yeah, really good. So somebody listening to your advice and just, you know, not brushing you aside. All right, Debbie, and then we'll move to the next question. I was going to say somebody telling you you're a good parent, like your kids are well-mannered or whatever, yeah. just telling you that you're a good parent. Yeah, really good. Excellent. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about the next question. Uh, what activity in God's kingdom edifies you and makes you feel most like you're achieving God's purpose in your life? So again, on the email, I gave you several examples, like when preaching or studying in small groups or leading family Bible study, worshiping with the church, evangelizing. You know, there's just so many different routes. Chloe? Uh, visiting elderly or shut in. Okay. Yeah, great. Visiting the elderly. It's really good. Uh, being asked to be a deacon. Okay. Oh, well, that, that might go with the previous question as well. That's pretty edifying, right, to be asked to be a deacon. All right. Uh, what else do we have for this one? All right, Will? Um, just connecting one-on-one -on -one with another Christian, because okay. if you have someone in the church, sometimes all you want is just one person to either get advice from, mm -hmm. talk to with, uh, talk about something to, or just leaning on them whenever you feel like you're about to fall. Okay, good. Yeah, so just connecting one-on-one. -on -one. That's helpful. Sometimes in a group, it's hard to. It's a totally different dynamic. It can be hard to connect on a, a more personal level. Um, let's see. Uh, Megan Burns says acts of service, like bringing meals to new new moms, um, etc. Uh, Anna Marcotte says participating in ladies' classes. All right, Brandon. Congregational singing, specifically learning new songs. Okay. Not that the regular service gets old, but it. Mm -hmm puts a new spin on it, learning new ways to worship God. Okay, great, great. We should do that sometime. We should, <laughs> we should have a special meeting with a guest yes, speaker. Yeah, no, really good. Uh, anybody else on that? All right, Jenna. And then Cindy over here, Joe. Teaching kids Bible class. Okay, teaching kids Bible class. That's great. And <laughs> for those like me who don't teach the you know, young kids, I'm so grateful for people like you that are able to do that because I would just be lost and not sure how to handle that situation. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, let's see, Cindy. Um, kind of like going off of Brandon's um, because I came from a church where there was music as in pianos and mm -hmm. drums and guitars and all that. Um, the first time I came here and we sang the Lord's Prayer, mm -hmm. I cried because I had never really heard the words to the mm. song and the harmony. That's what, mm. that's what builds me up is the harmony without mm. all the music in the background. Okay, yeah, just singing, singing from the heart to God. Um, Debbie. Um, because I'm away so much on Sundays, um, I'm thankful and I feel like I can contribute by sending cards to people okay. and by calling. A lot right. of people like Diane Thibon and B who can't be here all the time and mm -hmm. staying in touch with them. So it helps me to feel connected and feels like I can do something. Yeah. Because there's a lot of things I wish I could do, but I'm not here to do them. <laughs> sure, sure. Absolutely. That, that's great. Uh, Anna Marcotte said praying with, with others. Uh, Dwayne? Yeah, studying the Bible with other people and trying to look out what practical ways to apply it to our lives and seeing it from different angles and maybe even looking at it with a fresh pair of eyes with other Christians. Try to act like you're reading it for the first time and what it means to you. Okay, really good, yeah. All 
All right, those are all excellent. Um, let's kind of shift it as similar to in this next question. But is there some activity in God's kingdom that you would like to participate more in with others um, that maybe you just don't have the opportunity to or don't, can't seem to find the time for but would like to? Um, I gave you some examples on, on the email like singing at the building more, learning new songs, you know, praying, uh, prayer time at someone's house. Uh, Terry? So it kind of goes along with the last one, but... Um when I get a chance to evangelize to someone, it really, I mean, that's the time when I feel like I'm doing God's work the most. And okay. even though it's hard, you know, it's hard mm. and a lot of times you fail, um, you still like, that's like the purpose that we have, you know? Yeah, and I'd like I, to do more of that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it, it, it kind of goes with both of these because I think we all want to evangelize more, <laughs> you know? Uh, but yeah, that, that can really help you feel like you're fulfilling your purpose. Really good. All right, did I see another mic or did I make that up? Okay. All right. Who else on this one? What do you think? It doesn't necessarily mean you're a terrible person if it's not a spiritual thing. Like, it could just be, I just want to hang out more with Christian. I just want to have fun more with my brethren, right? So that, that's okay, too, for this answer. Will? Yeah. Oh. I'd just like oh, to sorry. say... Oh, <laughs> Will. I'd just like to say, personally, just having more connection and more group activities with peers same age as mine because I can tell that it's getting less and less possible uh, in this congregation. Yeah, a lot of people your age are getting jobs too and like I'm noticing I'm trying to get together the young, get the young people together and it's really hard because everybody's on different work schedules and uh, that, that's a real challenge but it is something that we should strive for and continue to, to make a priority. All right, Will Roberts. Yeah, uh, I was going to say hanging out or fellowship. I think the more time you sacrifice for others too, at least for me, the, the better you feel, the, the more edified you are that you're giving that time up for that, for that person. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, absolutely. Really good. All right, Dwayne's got one here and Randy's got one here. <clears throat> All right, Dwayne. I think doing more service projects together for other Christians or people outside into the community, mm. and I don't know that we do that enough, mm. and so doing that together I think would be an edifying experience for me and others. Yeah, that's really good. Mm. Yeah, I think we're, we're good to, we're good at reacting, like when there's a need, you know, somebody needs help moving or something, like, hey, we'll rally the troops, but kind of going out and maybe looking more actively for those opportunities. That would be a good thing to do, Randy. And I've been involved with a few things where maybe there was someone in the church who was older, maybe on a very fixed income, but needed something like a, a porch taken off that was rotting or uh, helping with some other things similar to that. And I'd really like to do more of those things. And I think it'd be great if some of us could invite a non-Christian to participate in that. Mm. So it kind of, I'd like to be more involved in reaching out evangelistically, mm -hmm. and maybe that's a way to combine it. Okay, yeah, you could even invite a non-Christian along to those service projects. And you know, part of my problem is I just I don't know what I'm doing. You know, says <laughs> yeah, you don't want me over to like you know do a bathroom project or something for you. Like I'm just going to make everything worse. So you know, you just kind of have to play that by ear. Um, who else said? All right, Aretha's got it. I wish we could do like a Sunday night service where we do singing and stuff like that because I mm -hmm. think that was such uplifting when we had that mm -hmm. little singing thing here lately. And mm -hmm. I wish that's something we could do like every yeah, Sunday some... night or one night of the week that we okay. all get together and do that. Okay, yeah, so maybe more special kind of services and we could use the Sunday night slot for that. Uh, Anna Marcotte says uh, the, some of the older ladies getting together for games, you know, cards, Scrabble, you know, <laughs> things like that, just spending more time together. Did I see a mic? Okay, Megan. Just to like expound on Will's point, Will Roberts' point about hanging out, um, you know, whether it is church related or it's not, I just want this to be the core group of people that my kids consider their group and like these are the normal people those people out there they're the weird ones. you know like whereas maybe growing up some of us had a different experience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the opposite and like 
I want this to be their family even more so than extended family, or yeah. I want them to play with the kids here even more so than the kids at the neighborhood. Yeah, really good point. Yeah, I mean, Christians, we can, we can be friends, you know, with everybody, but Christians should be our best friends, right? Our best friends should be Christians, because, and that's so natural, because we, we share the most common core, you know, values. Uh, and so we need to create those opportunities to spend time together as much as we can and get our kids together as well. Um, all right, really good. How about this question? Uh, what is the best way for others to encourage you to participate more? So it's kind of like the love language thing, you know, where it's like, okay, for some people, you just, they need somebody to get in their face and say, hey, you know, how come you're not involved more? Get there for the singing or whatever, fill in the blank, you know, be there for this service project. But most people, that's not how they respond, right? So how do you respond maybe if somebody wants to try to encourage you to, to get more involved in something? Get your attention for something. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Will. I know, but we want to hear it. You said that most people aren't going to um, use that as the way to encourage them. Mm -hmm. I am constantly sidetracked, so that is a good idea for me. <laughs> okay, so direct approach for Will. Yeah, really good. All right, Cindy? Um, I was going to say, being asked. Mm. Um, that that encourages me mm -hmm. that you know that they would want me to be involved in that. Okay, good. Yeah, just sometimes just an invitation. Yeah, Rachel. Yeah, I was gonna say something very similar. Like mm -hmm. being asked to do something. Um, mm -hmm. it, like it, it's, I feel like I'm a little bit more. I don't I don't know what the right word is. It may be passive about it. Like you know, mm -hmm. like you say, it's like just like sending out an email saying, hey, we need help with this. Yeah. Like I'm thinking, oh, th I'm sure like. There's going to be a lot of people that'll do it, <laughs> you know, and stuff right. like I, I kind of get in my own head a little bit or, yeah. you know, and it's just helpful if like someone like comes to me and says, hey, would you like to help with this? Because mm -hmm. I mean, I'm always. That's really <laughs> good. Oh, dear. Somebody said bribed with food. All right. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, that's, I asked for it. So <laughs> Charlotte. <laughs> um. This also kind of goes into the previous question too, but I think it would be um, really encouraging and edifying if we found members outside of this church in particular too. If we like met Christians outside of our um, church, like I know there's like another Church of Christ mm -hmm. in uh, Orlando, I forgot their name, but mm -hmm. you know, like there's um, other congregations if we reach out to other people and socialize more. Yeah, like what the guy's writing, socialize with more Christians mm -hmm. and yeah. that kind of Thing. I'm not articulating myself correctly, but <laughs> that's okay. I, yeah, well, we know what you mean. Um, yeah, that's a good, good edifying thing. Uh, Megan Burns texted uh, about sign up sheets. You could put sign up sheets in the bulletin or on the bulletin board in the lobby, you know, for specific needs that people can like literally sign up for. Because, uh, like Rachel was saying, I mean, there are, there are people who they want to get involved, they just don't really know how. And so, if if some of us can kind of come along and say, here's how you can get involved, here's some specific things that you can do. Uh, that can that can help them, Dwayne. I think sometimes just somebody else planning it, mm -hmm. and then inviting you to us. People have said being asked, but sometimes when there's, mm -hmm. if you feel like you have to plan it, it just adds a whole another level of oh, that's a lot of work, and yeah. so you're not as likely to get started. But if you're planning it together as a group, and then you're not the sole person getting it done, and other people are actually taking care of some of those details. Some people who are maybe more organized mm -hmm. than others. Yeah, yeah. It's good to have somebody take the lead in putting stuff together. Uh, okay, Will. No yeah, for me, the, the most encouraging is when I see the example uh, of others doing it. Because uh, first, I'm encouraged by them doing it, mm -hmm. but then I start immediately self -exam going through self-examination. Should I be doing this too? So. Right, yeah, that's really good. Um, let me ask this uh, final question here. And it's about our personal mission statement. And again, this is to help us with our edification bio. bio. You, you, know, you don't have to share this in, in your bio if you don't want to. Um, we came up with these months ago. Um, it's just a test to see if you remember <laughs> which one you came up with, or maybe you, you hadn't come up with one yet. But did anybody come up with a personal mission statement um, that they would be willing to, to share with the group? That was in one of our Bible classes, you know. A month ago, 
a couple months ago, something like that. All right, Chloe's got one. Show God's love through everything. Sorry. Show God's love through everything. Okay, I like that. Show God's love through everything. It's simple, but it's powerful. Very good. And it's focused on the greatest commands. Joe, did you have one? Yeah. yeah. So I'm just waiting uh, to encourage anyone to be more like God and less like yourself. Okay, yeah, and you always say that in your prayers, and I always I appreciate do. that. That's it. That's the, the Joe Rimmer signature, you know, Lord help us be uh, more like Christ and less like ourselves. And that's a great prayer and great mission statement. Uh, treat everything that you do as if God's watching because he is. Okay, good. Yeah, God's watching. All right, very good. Well, um, now that we've kind of walked through that together, I will share mine with you. <laughs> Uh, so you can see how I just kind of walk through those questions and on, on my own, in my own bio, and you get to know a little bit about me. So let me pull it up here, <clears throat> if I can. There we go. You can't see it, but I'll read it to you. Uh, Brian was born and raised in Tampa, Florida as an only child in a single parent household. He attended Florida College Academy where he learned about God and became a Christian right after the attacks on the Twin Towers. He loves movies and shows, fast cars, making people laugh, eating life-changing food, playing sports, and preaching God's Word. He's most edified when people invite him out to or over for meals, when people give him specific feedback about how his lessons have helped their walk with God, and when everyone who can be here is here at PSD on Sundays and Wednesdays. Brian feels most like he's accomplishing God's purpose when he's helping people see truths and connections in the Bible that give them a deeper understanding of God. His mission is to help people learn, love, and live God's Word. He would really enjoy playing more sports with his brethren. The best way to light a fire under Brian and get him to participate more in God's kingdom is to present him with a need. Since he's Batman, all it takes is to let him know Gotham needs you. So that's, that's my... Bio, uh, again, the neat thing is you can learn things about me, but you also learn what edifies me, what, you know, what really builds me up. And so if you're thinking, man, Brian seems kind of down, or I haven't built Brian up in a while, like you could just go on the directory and you have all this info about me and great ways to do it. Um, I do realize mine might be longer than some of you prefer to make yours, and that's totally fine. Um, there's no word limit. All right, so you can, you can make it as long as you want, but just realize if it's like a novel, right, it might be a little overwhelming for people. Uh, but on the other hand, if you make it too short and all it says is, I like turtles, that's not really going to be very helpful uh, to people. Now, as I mentioned Sunday, that's from a news clip uh, a long time ago. Maybe you guys remember that. I like turtles clip. Anyway, as I mentioned Sunday, uh, it would be great for parents to include these about their kids, too and to encourage your teenagers you know, to write edification bios of their own. Um, they may not be nearly as long, I realize that, <laughs> right? but just having one or two details about your kids that maybe we didn't know before or something about their, their passions in life and what their interests are, that can be a great way for us to make a connection with them and to build them up and, and edify them as well. So try to work on these and email them to me and Dwayne. You can just put me and Dwayne as the recipients, um, maybe within the next couple weeks. Otherwise, if you put it off for too long, you might forget about it. Now, to help us not forget about it, in the coming classes, which Dwayne will actually have all the rest of our classes this, uh, for this particular quarter, Dwayne's gonna give you an opportunity, maybe to one or two people, to share theirs with the class. Uh, so that way it'll just kind of be in the forefront of our minds over the next coming weeks while we're writing our own and submitting our own. And once you email those to me and Dwayne, we'll go ahead and put them into the directory for you so you won't have to worry about doing that. Any questions about the edification bios? Any concerns about our plan and what we're, what we're trying to accomplish there? Do you see a problem with people putting it in the directory themselves? It's harder, yes. Because don't you have to be an admin to do it? You can edit your own. Okay. Anything on your address, your okay. Profile, you can do anything you want to do. Okay. Well, if you know how to do that, then you can edit it on your own profile. Okay. I see. Fair enough. So if you 
know how to do that, to log in to your name and put it under the comment section, you can do that yourself or you can email that to, to me or Dwayne. Okay. Well, we got five minutes left or so, and we're just not going to get to our last three questions, but we, I think we can get to uh, the first one, which I think is fun to talk about. And that's, that's young people. How do we edify our, our young people? I did want to talk about all three of these groups, but we're, we're just not going to have time. Um, in Mark 10, if you look in Mark chapter 10, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, and, you know, the disciples realize he's got something serious coming up here, and he's been talking about his death, and <laughs> they don't fully understand it, but they know it's been weighing on Jesus' heart. But then all these kids, you know, all these parents bring their kids to him, um, probably infants, some toddlers, some babies. And, and Mark 10, verse 13, says they were bringing children to him so that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Permit the children to come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. And he took them in his arms and began blessing them, laying his hands on them. Um, the disciples, I don't think this is that they hated kids. I think it's that they knew they didn't want Jesus to get distracted. He had more important things to focus on. But to Jesus, the kids were super important. And he took them in his arms. He's holding babies. And he's praying over them that God would bless them in their life. So Jesus really cares about our young people. We want to do the same. How can we edify our young people at PSD? That goes from, from toddlers to, to teens. <clears throat> what do you think? <laughs> All right, Chloe. I know something that was really helpful when I was um, a teenager was the, wow, sorry, the teen nights at different people's houses. Okay. I know especially like the Weavers one year um, had us watch like an episode the beginning of like Wipeout, where somebody stated they were a Christian and then like cursed on the TV. And it just always stuck with me that that's what the world views as Christians. Mm -hmm. And we need to do our very best to be a better light than that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, those teen nights are a great way to connect with people your age and learn, uh, you know, helpful Bible lessons. Um, what else, Terry? I think preparing uh, your children for class and then mm -hmm. the teachers you know, giving positive affirmation when they, when they know the material can be yeah. really edifying. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, it's edifying for them to be ready for class and to be complimented on that. Yeah, really good. Um, someone typed to give them a, a job to do uh, as well. Yeah, get them involved. Hey, we need you. Can I tell them what they can do. Jenna, back here, and then Will there. <clears throat> Go ahead, Will. Um, uh, similar to that, preparing them for class, just making sure that they're growing up with a, a, a good foundation, substantive foundation, and, and giving them meat when, you know, when they're ready for it as, as much as available, uh, as much as you can. Give them that substantive Bible teaching. Yeah, really good. Jenna? Um, engage them in conversation. Kids love to be treated as adults, and they'll have... They'll have varying attention spans depending on their age. But mm -hmm. I remember as a kid, it was very edifying to me to have relationships with older people in the congregation. I usually had one older lady that I would always go talk to, mm -hmm. and she would tell me stories. And it was just like I had, because I knew I was encouraging her, but it also it was like good for me. Mm -hmm. So just having those relationships, those multi-generational relationships, even with the young kids, I think is great. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, and ultimately it starts with the, our our hearts toward our young people as adults, you know, to have that Christ-like heart that, man, they, they are precious. It's not just, well, they're not my age, like, we can't connect, like, I'm not going to talk to them. Well, no, you make an effort to show them that, that they're important. Um, Brandon? Oh, sorry. And then Will. Emphasizing why we believe what we believe. I know when I was younger, it was just something I did on Sundays and Wednesdays. It wasn't something I believed yet because I didn't understand that it was important. Yeah, really good. Yeah, Will? Um, particularly uh, give them a job to do that you as the parent and the child, both of you know that the child can do, okay. that they are confident doing. Yeah, yeah, don't give them something that's way outside their skill set. Rachel? 
asking them to help you out or something with something to make them feel like you know they're needed and that like you know yeah. they're, they're being a big help to you and Definitely. like whether you're a young like a, like a much younger like you know hey could you help me prepare this meal for this family mm -hmm. or yeah. if they're a teen hey could you help babysit <laughs> Yeah, and even if you don't even really need their help, right? It was just saying, hey, I need somebody big and strong, you know, to help me carry this bag or whatever. Uh, that can really uh, build them up. We, we are out of time. I did want to share this one last thing with you on that. Um, I heard this from somebody I thought was really helpful. Um, tell them how awesome their parents are. Like, hey, I just want you to know, like, your dad is just the coolest. You know, he, he's just such a good, or your parents are just, they're so godly. Like, you're so lucky to have parents like them. That's just so great. You might not necessarily think that's a way to build kids up, but it actually it actually is. I thought that was really helpful and interesting. All right, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And look forward to those edification bios.